I want you to open your Bibles tonight. What a powerful, incredible weekend we had this weekend. Amen. What an amazing time in the Holy Spirit. And I want to move very quickly tonight in the Spirit. We also want to welcome back our good friends, the Blossers, that are back. <laughs> Glory to God. They're, whew, they were with us in the er, fairly, pretty early days, and uh, I didn't freak them out too bad. No, and, 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 and uh, jobs pulled away, but they come back and uh, come back for be a part of the Holy Ghost move of God. And got a got a phone or got a, a communication from a pastor that I met down at the DNA summit with Doc, Doc, uh, uh, Larry Stockstill, and uh, he's all fired up. So he's he just informed me that he's bringing his whole family up for the Zadok conference, and got a family from Canada coming. Glory to God! I just like wow. Lord, I got get a bunch of people fired up around the world. <laughs> Whoo, hallelujah. I'm moving quickly because I, I, I want to get through some stuff powerfully tonight before we all get rip roaring blasted. And I'm going to lay something in, in your spirit tonight. Second Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4. I want to start by this. I want you to make a declaration. Say, the devil is a liar. Say it again. The devil is a liar. Devil is a liar. Say, no weapon, no weapon formed against me, formed me shall, prosper. shall prosper. Declare this. God, God has, not has not planned any defeats, any defeats for, me. for me. Now, we're in, I think this is week 12 of our spiritual warfare school of ministry, and we have gone very deep in the Holy Spirit. Tonight, I've got two major things we're going to transpire tonight. First, we're going to lay an assault against five pesky demon spirits. And we're going to go into some spiritual warfare prayer and deal with these despotisms, deal with these demons, and get them out of our face. Come on. I, <laughs> Glory to God. Whoo. Don't be. Oh, Lord Jesus. Second Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4. How many of you know if the devil's out there doing stuff, we ought to recognize that he's doing stuff? Amen. Somebody's going to have to help me a little bit better than that. Someone say amen. amen. For the weapons of our warfare, Second Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4, from the Amplified. For the weapons of our warfare are not physical Weapons of flesh and blood, but they are mighty before God <laughs> for the overthrow and destruction of strongholds. Everybody say stronghold. stronghold. Now, a stronghold is a fortified position upon which an aggressor launches further assaults. It is a fortified position. The enemy sets up fortified positions in our lives, in our families, in our cities, and in our nations. And from those fortified positions, he launches further assaults. That's why the Bible says, give no place to the devil. Come on, amen. Don't give the devil any fortified positions. Because if you give the devil a fortified position, he will engage in further assaults. Come on, amen. That's why you don't leave an area open in your life. Boy, I'm going to smack the devil. I used to preach a message called the luxury of backsliding. That there's an un preach doctrine in the American church that, well, it's all right. Everybody's going backslide and it's okay. You just come back anytime you want. And we call it the luxury of backsliding. And in this message, I said, there were two things that I've noticed in my experience that when you let these things in every single time, in my experience, 100% of the time, Christians backslide. Now, I don't mean necessarily they Sometimes they go all the way away from God, but other times they just wane in their fire and their purity and their hunger. 
And those two areas, I'm already in trouble and it's only two minutes into it. Those two areas are unsafe friends and secular music. Every time I, 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 I'm telling you. Now, we, that was back when you didn't have to used to have, that's back when they didn't have secular music in church. We, we, we read, uh, there was an, a, a large church there just advertising for a new worship pastor. And in the job description, they said, you must incorporate secular music into the church services. What? <laughs> it's, like, it's like, come on in, devil, and come on in, Jesus. Ain't going to happen. Come on. <laughs> Light and darkness don't mix. God and Beelzebub just don't hang out with each other. Come on, the ark. <laughs> Whew. <laughs> Whew. Glory to God. Whew. Come on, remember when the ark went into the Philistine temple? There was a whole little destruction going on. <laughs> we are, there are strongholds of the enemy that we've got to recognize. We've got to go after. We've got to eliminate not only from our lives and from our families, but also from our regions. And we have the power and authority to do it. We got to stop. I tell you, I feel fire in my bones tonight. I'm mad at the devil tonight. Come on. I'm tired of him deceiving. I'm tired of him intimidating God's people into accepting his place and fix. Oh, well, Brother Steve, you don't understand how hard our region is. No, you don't understand that greater is he that is in you than he that's in the world. We don't have to put up with this stuff. Oh, Brother Steve, oh, what, what, what are you saying about all this thing that's going on with Trayvon Martin and these, these, these things that are beginning to break out? I'm telling you, why are you intimidated by it? Well, they're trying to stir up all this racial tension. How about we take authority and bind the spirit of division and bind the spirit of hate? Huh? She caught up Moshe Problem is, the church... Let strongholds get in their heart. Strongholds of bitterness. Strongholds of hate. Strongholds of fear. Oh, my Lord. All right. Lord Jesus. I wasn't going to talk about strongholds. I'm just trying to get down farther in the scripture. <laughs> but the weapons of our warfare are not physical weapons of flesh and blood. But they are mighty before God for the overthrow and destruction. Of stronghold. Somebody say destruction. destruction. Not temporary push it back. Amen. Come, on. come on. When Charles Finney would go into a region. And I want you to understand. You're going to come into understanding why the devil has been fighting the move of the Holy Ghost in our churches. You're going to understand that the manifestation of the gifts of the Spirit isn't simply some light little thing that's a nice little enjoyable extra bonus, but it's not that necessary. You're going to understand tonight by divine revelation that the manifestation of the gifts of the Spirit is one of the greatest demonstrations of the power of God and spiritual warfare to destroy strongholds. It's time we stop placating. It's time we understand the devil is a liar. I said the devil is a liar. He's got no power over you. I said he's got no power over you. Somebody going to get there. Come on, say it. He's got no power over me. The only power the enemy has is the power to deceive. If you believe his lies, then you give him all kinds of power. But we're not going to believe his lies. For the Bible says we are not unaware of the devil's devices. Ooh, glory to God. The overthrow and destruction of strongholds. Inasmuch as we refute arguments and theories and reasonings and every proud and lofty thing that sets itself up against the true knowledge of God. Somebody say, I'm not going to believe those lies anymore. <laughs> say, I am what God says I am. <laughs> Whoo, glory to God. Don't matter what you feel like, just matters what you are. Come on, amen. Hallelujah. And we lead every thought and purpose away captive 
into obedience of Christ, the Messiah, the anointed one. Now, I want this to go very deep in your spirit because the strongholds that are set up, although there are demon spirits in the spirit realm, the only way they have any power is if they're able to set up a stronghold of lies in the minds of people. The enemy has no power except he set up lies in the minds of people and get people to believe the lies. Come on, are you all with me on this? And so even when we go into spiritual warfare prayer and when we bind principalities and powers and we're going into these dimensions of the spirit realm, we're, we're, we're rendering powerless the work of the demon spirits, but we still got to get a breakthrough in the minds of the people. That's why prayer is not enough. You got to preach. Now, I'm gonna, are you hearing me? Prayer is not enough. You can bind up every devil and demon. But if you don't bring the truth to deal with the lies that have already been sown. I'm going to give you $5, man. You say, man, Boren's fired up tonight. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> and I'm telling you, we've got to get a hold of these things, and we've got to break the power of these things. And we're going to go after them tonight. And now here's one of the other challenges, is when you go into spiritual warfare prayer and we begin to bind the power of these enemies, we've got to, we've got to also fill them up with something. Because the Bible tells us if you go in and you take a strong man out of a house, right? And you clean up the house, but you don't put anything back in. That devil, that enemy that left is going to come back with seven more, and the end is worse off. Huh? My Lord Jesus. That's why you don't, don't you dare be coming to these services and the revival services that are about to break out. I, you have to understand what's exploding inside of me. I'm about ready to go into five nights a week. I just, something is stirring so deep inside of me. My Lord, my Lord, my Lord, my Lord. I'm just, I'm, I'm ready. I don't know if the people are ready, but I'm ready. We, we've got to go into the spirit realm. We've got to not only get the things out, but we got to get some great stuff in. All right. Tonight, five demon spirits. Let me give you these quickly so I can move into the next dimension. Number one, we're going to go into prayer here in just a minute. Are you ready? Come on. I know the front row right here, pocket here is ready. Are you ready? In the back. Somebody say, I've got power and authority tonight. All right. Number one demon spirit. That's trying to blockade what God is doing is the spirit of intimidation. Huh? Intimidation. Do you know what? Do you know there's people that actually come into the upper room church? They come into these meetings, they're blown away by what God is doing. They're like, wow. And then the spirit of intimidation comes and attacks them and says, Well, you're not spiritual enough to hang out with them. Well, you, you don't have what it takes. You can't go that. Someone said the devil's a liar. We weren't spiritual enough to hang out with us either. Come on, amen. We didn't start, we didn't start this way. The Spirit of God. We just yielded to God, said, Lord, change me, Lord, break me, Lord, shake me. Huh? Well, I don't know if I can keep up. I don't know if I can do. Why are you why why are you believing the lie? You got a strong hidden in your mind. The Bible says, I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. But as long as you believe the lie, I remember when I first got saved. I got radically saved, pinned to the floor for 40 minutes, heard a choir of angels singing an indescribable song, instantaneously delivered from five years of drug addiction and alcoholism. Two days later, another incredible encounter, 
on the floor for another 30 minutes. Then I was up on my, in the aisle way on my knees worshiping God. I was doing that two days on the Lord. Can't get some people just serving God 20 years to get on their knees. <laughs> huh? And right there, no, no one praying for me, didn't, never, didn't know what it was. God spoke to me, showed me a vision, said, I've called you to preach my gospel. Power, I said, yes, Lord, I will. I saw uh, all my plans in my life that I had for my life before me in a vision. I said, yes, Lord, I will. I literally saw them go off in a distance, and right there, waves of the Holy Ghost started coming on me, and I started speaking in other tongues. Didn't even know what it was. It was like, kitty, 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 kitty. I was calling kitty cats or something. Kitty, 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 kitty. And people heard it, and they ran up to me and said, oh, brother, speak it out, speak it out. And I'm thinking, speak what out? It's gibberish. I'm trying to talk English, and my tongue's going. Dee, 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 dee. <laughs> Had this incredible experience. Two days later, I'm sitting in my house, and the devil, someone said the devil's a liar. The devil's a liar. The devil says, you can't do this. You can't live this. There's no way. He said, it was a great experience. You can remember it for the rest of your life. Now, don't go back. Come on, y'all hearing me? He says, as a matter of fact, go to the fridge and get a beer. I said, okay. I did. I went to the fridge, got a beer. <laughs> Down it. He said, you really can't do it. He said, get another one. Okay. When the beer. <laughs> no, no, I started just downing beers. I don't know how many, quite a few. Started downing beers. Now I'm like, Bzzz. now the devil's really talking to me. Just leave, run, stay away from those people, avoid them. You can't do this. You can't do this. You can't. I'm hearing that voice, that lie, saying you can't do this. And I'm hearing a still, small voice saying, there's a a pastor I had met. I was at his Bible study the night before. His name was Jeff. And I hear this voice saying, go to Jeff's. Go to Jeff's. Are you saying God told you to drive drunk, apparently? (laughs) Well, he didn't say drive to Jeff's. He said, go to Jeff's. I just, I did the rest. (laughs) I was, I was buzzing pretty good and got over to Jeff's and show, showed up at his house and ding dong. He said, hey, Steve, how's it going? I said, I just got beat up. He said, what happened? And I told him, I said, I'm drunk. And I said, I heard all these voices screaming at me. He said, you can't do this. You can't do this. Quit. Get drunk. Run away. And I said, but I heard this little voice say, go to Jeff's. So I'm here. He said, welcome to spiritual warfare. I said, you didn't tell me about this part. I like the part on the ground going, that was cool. He said, let's go for a walk. We walked around a little small block, not a big block. Walked around the block. By by the time we got around the block, it was only like a five-minute walk. By the time we got around the block, I was completely sober. (laughs) Hallelujah. (laughs) Laid hands on me, just bound the power of the enemy. And I, whoo, glory to God, that's the last time I ever got drunk. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody say the devil's a liar. liar. All right. The spirit of intimidation. 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 7. For God has not given us the spirit of timidity or intimidation or fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Someone say I'm not going to be intimidated. I'm not going to be intimidated. I can do all things through Christ. Uh, See, you got timid on that one. I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. Second demon spirit. First one is intimidation. Try to get people to run away. Try to get people to say, see, the devil's like, the devil's got the leaders in the church all intimidated. Oh, you can't go for, don't don't go for the signs and wonders. Don't go for the power of God. Because people will, they'll talk about you. The media will write about you. People will leave your church. You won't get enough offerings. That's a spirit of intimidation. The Bible says the fear of man is a snare, traps you, holds you prisoner. Number two, I got to, oh, Lord, I just got to smack these. Number two, distraction. Somebody say distraction. distraction. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 25 through 27. So first, we're dealing with these five demon spirits. I want to put them up here. Intimidation. Distraction. Now, this is a great 
strategy of the enemy to get us distracted, especially if you want to move in the end time move of God. If you want to be a part of of an outbreak of the Holy Ghost, you're going to have to learn how to get spiritually focused. Because the devil will throw anything he can to get you distracted on a bunch of stuff that has no that you don't even need to be involved in. Come on, amen. Come on, come on, come on. You can put right next to it a picture of Facebook. Or whatever. Come on, there's so much distraction, right? Proverbs chapter 4, verse 25 through 27 in the Amplified. Let your eyes look right on <laughs> with fixed purpose. Let your gaze be straight before you. Consider well the path of your feet and let all your ways be established and ordered aright. Turn not aside to the right hand or to the left. Remove your foot from evil. Look straight forward. The Bible says when Jesus came up, the Bible says that he set his face like a flint. He was focused on his purpose. He was not going to allow distractions. And it's all right. It's all right to turn to a lot of stuff and issues of life and say, you know what? That's just nothing but a distraction. Come on, amen. I'm not going to get distracted by that. I'm on a mission. I'm on, we're on a mission from God. All right. Some of you don't remember that. All right. Hallelujah. Number three, hindering spirits. There are demon spirits. Their whole job is to hinder. They're just hindering spirits. Paul talked about this in 1 Thessalonians 2.18. Therefore, we wanted to come to you, even I, Paul, time and again. But Satan hindered us. There are hindering spirits. We have power and authority over them in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, somebody, amen. amen. Come on, have you, how many ever felt a hindering spirit? Come on, amen. amen. Feel it sometimes in even coming to church, sometimes in worship, you feel a hindering spirit. Amen. Hello. Go to, go to war against that thing. Number four, this is huge. This is huge. Spirit of negativity. It's a spirit. Come on. It's a spirit. There's nothing we have to be negative about. We're the head, not the tail. We're nothing but above and not believe. Come on. We are blessed. We are highly favored of the Lord. There's nothing to be negative about. But that spirit of negativity. I was on the phone last night talking about financial breakthroughs. And this businessman that we've had a long time relationship with, he just blurted out, well... And I won't even, I'm not going to repeat his words. He said something very negative. Well, I couldn't help myself because this message was stirring inside of me. And I, over the phone, I said, don't you speak that out. (laughs) Come on. God will use your fellow Christians to release negativity on you. Am I telling anybody? Come on. And I said, don't you, speak, but, but, but I just care. I'm just, I just want you to be careful. Stop it. He got quiet. I said, you speak life over this thing. Don't you speak one word of death. Huh? Well, I'm just being real. No, you're just being real dumb. Come, come on. Oh, Lord Jesus. Do we believe the promises of God or not? Yeah. Come on, did he say, if you ask anything in my name, I'm going to do it for you? Yeah. Then why, why are we getting all negative? We're getting negative because we stopped believing and trusting in him. On, we stopped bl- trusting in him. Now watch this. N- numbers, long story here, but Numbers 13, beginning with verse 27. I want you to watch the power and the effect of the spirit of negativity. This is when the spies went into the spy out the land, and they came back, the 12 spies that they told him, Moses and the people, and said, we went to the land where you sent us. It truly flows with milk and honey. And this is the fruit. I mean, the grapes were so big, it took two people to carry one vine of, one, one thing of grapes. These were some big grapes. All right? I mean, they said, everything God said is true. The land flows with milk and honey, and look at the fruit. But 
I always tell people when you hear a but, get ready for some stinking thinking. <laughs> Nevertheless, the people who dwell in the land are strong. Now, I got a question for you. Did not God know that? Come on. Are y'all, I mean, God was not surprised. Hey, going to land with milk and honey. Oops, I forgot. There's giants in the land. <laughs> oh, angels, what are we going to do? God already knew it. You say, well, why, God, why didn't God tell us before we went? Because you'd probably get freaked out. <laughs> Come on, amen. Come on. Y'all know what I'm telling you. How many know if you're going to do anything free for God, God will tell you to do stuff. He won't tell you how big the battle is ahead of you. <laughs> he wants you to just say, yes, Lord, I will. <laughs> and then you get up to a Red Sea and you say, Lord. He says, that's okay. I got to handle because if he, if he laid out all the battles you're going to have to face before you have to face him, most of y'all would be hiding in the closet somewhere and say, I ain't leaving. I ain't leaving. No, I'm going to be a prayer warrior. Shaka Bahia. <laughs> He'd be saying, who shall I send? Here my Lord. Send him. <laughs> it's... <laughs> Nevertheless, 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 the people who dwell in the land are strong. The cities are fortified and very large. Moreover, we saw the descendants of Anak there. The Amalekites dwell in the land of the south, and the Hittites, and the Jebusites, and the Amorites, and the Mosquito Bites, and all the other heights. <laughs> His land is full of bugs. You know what a bug is? Neither do I, but that's what they call demons in New Zealand, so I call them bugs. Boog infested. <laughs> this land was boog infested. It had all kinds of enemies. And that, that's like people, when they walk in, walk in the Keller, they walk in this area, oh, Brother Steve, there's such a religious spirit here. Oh, Brother Steve, there's so many strongholds. You just go, oh, Brother, it's so hard. It's so hard. We've been here laboring. And you get around preachers. They're the worst ones. I've been here for 20 years in hell. This is hard tilling, Brother Steve. It's just. They're all intimidated. Huh? They're distracted. They're negative. I'm telling you, that's some of the, I love, I love God's people, but some of the worst people to be around are preachers. They'll tell you all the way, well, it just doesn't work that way, Brother Steve. Doesn't work that way. I mean, I know I've told, I told you oh, this weekend over the phone, I'm on the phone with a big name preacher. I mean, he's got nine campuses, you know, I mean, $12 million budget, 158 people in his worship teams. And I told him about the move of God that hit it two Sundays ago, and I spent the half the time on the altar bawling my eyes out. And he said, well, let me give you some advice. You can't build a church like that. You'll never reach a neighbor. You'll never reach your community. I said, what? Let me give you some advice. I've, I, I know how to move in the anointing, he said. I've done that Holy Ghost thing. I said, apparently not enough. Huh? <laughs> yeah. I, I, I was just, I, I was, now it's nice to him. He wasn't my friend, so I didn't rebuke him. But I just, I, I'm, 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 I'm like, well, thank you very much. Thanks for the advice. Goodbye. <laughs> I don't want to talk to you. What do you, what, 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 at the same time, the Holy Ghost is talking to us and saying, I'm looking for a place that's going to host an outbreak of the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Come on. Hallelujah. They released that spirit. In the then Caleb quieted the people before Moses and said, let us go up at once and take possession, for we are well able to overcome it. Ah, oh, come on. I love being around people of faith. But people of fear don't like being around people of faith. Come on. Negative people not only like being negative, they, they get mad at you when you're positive. Come on, amen. He said, let's go. We're well able to do it. But the men who had gone up with him said, we are not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we. Excuse me. Are you the same folks that just a few weeks ago watched God swallow up the mightiest military force on the planet, the entire Egyptian army, and you didn't have to lift up one bow, one sword, one weapon, and now you're afraid of a few giants? Yeah. 
Anybody here, God ever delivered you of something? Come on. No, you can do better. Shout at me. Anybody here, any God ever heal your body? Has anybody here, God ever given you a financial breakthrough? The same God that hath done it is the same God that is doing it. He's the same God that will do it. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And if you defeated your Egyptians in the past, he'll take care of the giants today. He'll knock away. He'll destroy the Philistines of tomorrow. And they gave the children of Israel a bad, a negative report of the land, which they had spied out, saying, the land through which we have gone as spies is a land that devours its inhabitants. Don't you go out there. Watch out. Watch out. Don't, don't go to that spiritual warfare class. Be careful. Because if you get in spiritual warfare, the devil's going to come after your family. He's going to tell you, come on, you ever hear this stuff like this? You better be careful, brothers. Don't be careful. Don't, 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 don't pray like that. Don't start commanding strongholds to come down. Don't, don't go out there and witness. Watch out. You got to be quiet, stealth, kind of like. <laughs> be careful. Did you hear on the news? Some preacher got arrested. They're being arrested, thrown in prison. So don't talk about homosexuality. Don't talk about these things. Because people are getting arrested. Just shh. Be very, very quiet. Uh, okay. <laughs> Shakarabasande. Shikarabasande. Hey, hey. Woo, ha, ha. He said, the, la- <laughs> the land devours its inhabitants, and the people whom we saw in it are men of great stature. There we saw the giants. The descendants of Ada came from the giants. And we were like grasshoppers in our own sight. There's the problem. And so we were in their sight. They had a wrong image of who they were. They weren't grasshoppers. They were the ch- children of the Most High God. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Woo! Hallelujah! 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 Glory to God! <laughs> Hallelujah! Hallelujah! One with the Lord is enough. Mm, I'm going to show you it in a moment. That God even thinks that one is enough. So all the congregation lifted up their voices and cried because a spirit of negativity was spread like wildfire. I just don't understand this. I just don't know why that. I just didn't. Nah, 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 nah. I watch it. I watch it. You can be in the middle of a move of God, a spirit of negativity will get in, and it can just rip that thing apart. People start listening. Don't listen. I'm telling you, here's what you do to spirit of negativity. I ain't listening. I ain't. Li- I mean, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta I listen in love. You gotta run, cause those, some, some neg- negative spirits won't shut up. And if you really want to help them shut up, this is really bad advice, but uh, it works. They start being negative, and they won't stop. Just say, I bind that spirit of negativity. All right, be be nice and gentle, but sometimes you gotta come on, huh? I learned that around Brother Cirillo, man. Woo, don't get negative around him. Woo, don't, no, 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 no. Well, I just, I don't think we can do this. I mean, he will, he will get unglued. I mean, I mean, and when he gets unglued, he's got that voice. Don't you speak like that. That's nothing but doubt and unbelief. And you're like, he'll do it in front of 10,000 people. Now you get out there and do it. You think I'm kidding. I tell you, I tell you, he says, he says, do something. I just do it because I won't get yelled at in front of 10,000 people. I got fear of God and fear of Morris, too. (laughs) 
No, he learned in the nations of the world. You don't, you don't, don't, don't fill yourself with negativity. Don't fill me with negativity and doubt and unbelief. Do you know what he would tell them? He said, when I, if I'm in a, when, in a country, his, his core people, they were trained. You do not give me a negative report. Said, if they're going to arrest me, don't tell me. Sent the army out to, go, to, to, to take me off, don't tell me. Threats against my life, don't tell me. He was overseas. I love this story. Overseas. I believe it was India. And the military, the government told his people, you tell Brother Cirillo, he's not allowed to step on that platform. He steps on that platform, we're going to throw him in prison for the rest of his life. And you guys too. They sent out a thousand military to get one man of God. Brother Shrill's in the car. They pick him up at the hotel. This guy's sweating bullets. He's not telling Brother Shrill anything. He's been ordered. You do not tell me no matter what. It's important you obey instructions. Come on, amen. Oh, this is a special show. No, you don't tell me no matter. So they drive up, and Brother Shrill sees all, a thousand military out there, all these military out there. And he says, praise God. They sent the military out to protect me. So he steps out, and the guy said, they're going in here to protect you. He's, just going to, he's holding his tongue. Yeah, Brother Show, okay. <laughs> Brother Show gets out of the car, looks at these military guys. They're blockading. I mean, many, many people deep, blockading the way to the stage. He's ready to get up and preach. Hundreds of thousands of people there. He walks out, looks at them, goes like this, salutes. They're kind of a little stunned. They salute, turn sideways, and make a path for him to walk right up on the stage. He gets up on the stage, grabs the microphone, starts to preach. The main military guy is freaking out. What did you guys do? I told you don't let him on the stage. All right, all right. So all you men, go and surround the crowd. 30 of us are going to rush the platform. When I give the signal, you guys disperse the crowd and we'll charge the platform. Brother Shrill is preaching the gospel message. He, the guy gives the signal. They go to move forward and they hit an invisible wall. All 1,000 couldn't get into the crowd. They couldn't get on the platform. They were frozen solid. Come on. Somebody say, greater is he that is in me than he that's in the world. Huh? When he gave the altar call, 90% of those military men took off their hats, bowed their heads, prayed the sinner's prayer. And that head military guy got so radically saved, he's all over India preaching the gospel even to this day. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Woo. Somebody say the devil's a liar. But he learned to deal with those negative forces of doubt and unbelief. He learned how to deal with the spirit of negativity. Don't feel me. And that's where I'm I, 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 oh, God, I'm at. Don't give me that. I don't want to hear it. Well, brother, no, I don't want to hear it. I, ooh, glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. I think I got a new rule for counseling. You better have at least 100 scriptures and, and 10 hours of prayer before you come for counseling. You, you, you t if you can get a hundred verses in your heart <laughs> that deal with your problem, I problem, I don't care what your problem is, you got at least a hundred verses that'll give you some victory on it. And you got ten hours of shuck them a hundred and cut them asunder under you, you probably ain't gonna need counseling. <laughs> Woo! And then get to church every time the doors open, let us lay hands on you and until you're so full and you're just dripping and you're just like on what was my problem now? Had a much Sunday. He called, quick, okay. He said, they said the whole congregation complained against Moses and Aaron because that's when the spirit of negativity goes. They go after the leaders. And the whole congregation said to them, if we had only died in the land of Egypt, the world was better. And if we'd only died in the wilderness, 
Why has the Lord brought us to the land to fall by the sword that our wives and children be, should become victims? Wouldn't it be better for us to return to Egypt, they said to one another? Let us select a leader and go back to the world. We'll call it Seeker Sensitive Church. Oh. The, 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 Because I want to go to church and hear him say, I feel good. <laughs> you might feel good, but you're dying. All right. Then Moses, <laughs> then Moses and Aaron fell on their faces before all the assembly of the congregation of children of Israel. But Joshua, uh, Joshua the son of Nun, and Caleb, the son of uh, whoever, <laughs> who were... Who were, who were among those, even, my, even my, my program's got an underline saying, what's that word? <laughs> who were among those who had spied out the land, tore their clothes, and they spoke to the children of uh, the congregation of the children of Israel, saying, the land we pass through to spy out is an exceedingly good land. If the Lord delights in us, then he will bring us into this land and give it to us, Amen. a land which flows with milk and honey. Only do not rebel. Do you understand when you get under the influence of spirit of negativity, you've begun down the path of rebellion? Do not rebel against the Lord, nor fear the people of the land, for they are our bread. <laughs> Their portion has departed from them, and the Lord is with us. Do not fear them. And the congregation said, oh, we're so sorry. Oh, no, no. <laughs> and the congregation said, stone them with stones. Now the glory of the Lord appeared because he was upset in the temple of meeting before the children of Israel. Moses interceded for the people. Then the Lord said, how long will these people reject me? How long will they not believe me with all the signs that I've performed among them? I will strike them with the pestilence and disinherit them, and I will make you, you Moses, I will make you a nation greater and mightier than they. God says, if I got you, I got enough. Ooh, God's just looking for some people of faith and power. Hallelujah. Someone say negativity. Oh, Lord, I got to move quickly. And then the fifth spirit is doubt. Everybody say doubt. Mark chapter 11, verse 22. And Jesus answered and said to them, Have faith in God. For assuredly I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, Be removed and be cast into sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he says will be done, he will have whatever. Someone say whatever. whatever. Say it again. Say whatever. whatever. He'll have whatever he says. Therefore I say to you, Whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. Somebody say, I believe I will. I, believe I, will. I take it. I, I have it. I, have I thank you for it. And I forgive. Woo, glory to God. Lift your hands and begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. Shaka, Benjamin, help me out for just a moment. My born, help me out quickly. Come on, we're going to pray. I got some more to share. It's early. It's very, very early. But let's go to warfare against these things. The spirit of intimidation. The spirit of distraction. Shakara, come on, stand to your feet. Stand to your feet all over this building. Come on, a hindering spirit. Shakara, the spirit of negativity and the spirit of doubt. Shakara, ma shaka, ba 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 ba